I've been building out my shoulder rigs wrong for a couple years now, so I think it's finally time that I fix my mistakes. To show you exactly what I'm talking about, I have a really stripped down version of a shoulder rig here. So once I get this up, you can see that I've got the camera pretty much right in the center of the rig. And the main problem here is that everything ends up becoming really front heavy. And naturally the rig just wants to fall forward right off my shoulder. There's no weight being applied to it. Now you could add counterweights to the back, which is what a lot of guys do, but then your rig becomes unnecessarily heavy. The camera is not resting right on top of my shoulder, which is really where it should be to get the most steady shots and have the most even balance. So I'm not putting all that stress and strain on my arms. Now, most of the gear that I've used over the years doesn't allow you to get the camera right over the shoulder pad where it should really be to get the best balance and the most steady shots. So the real solution to this is a VCT shoulder pad. And this one is from Small Rig, but there are many other companies that make something similar. A part like this is very popular in the cinematography world and especially in the broadcasting world because those guys always have their cameras up on their shoulders and then they want to be able to quickly throw them onto a tripod. So I'm going to show you how to set up a full shoulder rig using a VCT plate that of course allows you to use it on your shoulder or take it off and throw it on a tripod or slider really quickly. So let's get this amateur shoulder rig out of the way so we can build out a full shoulder rig with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. So first I'm going to throw the base plate that comes with the shoulder pad on the camera. So already you can tell that the camera is pretty well centered on top of the shoulder pad, but it's still front heavy with the lens on there. So let's add a V-mount battery to the back that'll act as a counterweight. What I have here is a little 15 millimeter rod hinge from Small Rig, and then on the back I have a V-mount adapter screwed into it. And if you're wondering what any of these parts are or where you can get them, just check out the links in the description below. So let's slide this right into the back of the shoulder pad here and then tighten it down. Now let's throw a V-mount battery on here and I'm using this one from DNO that's just a little bit bigger and heavier so it works better as a counterweight. Now let's get the grips on the front of the rig. And what's cool about this shoulder pad is that it actually comes with area rosettes installed on either side. So you can put the grips onto those instead of mounting them onto 15 millimeter rods if you don't wanna do that. So what I have here are two small rig arms that have air rosettes on either side and they are fully extendable. Now what I like about these is they have a full metal build and they actually do feel pretty solid but I did actually have a problem with one of mine and that was with this knob. This is kind of a weak point for these, I think. And this is actually a replacement one. That's why it's red. What happened to me is that this little knob actually broke on the inside and it would just spin indefinitely and I couldn't loosen it so I could change you know, the position of the arm itself or even get it off of the rig. So I actually had to take a drill to it and just completely drill the screw out and tear this little knob off. And I'm hoping that the replacement works a lot better. Something I love about air rosettes is that they're very universal. So you can use any grips that you want on the end of these arms here. So what I picked up are these two little small rig rubber grips and they feel really comfortable and they're much more solid than a lot of the other grips that I've bought. But I actually only need one of them. So I'm just gonna be mounting the right one here. And then on the left-hand side, I'm gonna use the Tilta Nucleus Nano Focus Handle. And I've actually shown this on the channel before in another shoulder rig build, and I absolutely love it. That's much more comfortable for me so that I can just rest my arms like this. They're not up all super high like you were seeing me with the other more amateur rig. They're actually much more in a relaxed state and I can just hold the rig right on top of my shoulder. So already you can see just how much better balance this is. Now, the only thing I don't like about this is actually the Pocket 6K itself because it's just such a wide camera. So when you have it on a shoulder rig, it actually kind of butts up against your head and all the cables come out towards your face, which is definitely annoying. But if you're doing this shoulder rig with pretty much 
any other camera, including like the Sony FS5, the Sony Alphas, any of those cameras are much slimmer, so you won't have that problem. Now, as you can see, the camera sits back pretty far and it's behind my head and obviously my line of sight. So I can't see my monitor and what I'm actually filming. So I'm actually gonna get a monitor mounted now so I can, of course, see everything that I'm doing. And I'm actually gonna mount the monitor off of my top handle. And this is just a small rig NATO mount top handle. And I'm actually gonna mount it with the top handle facing towards the lens to give me a little bit more length to get this monitor out in front of my face. Next, I'm gonna add another piece of NATO rail to the side of this top handle that I'm gonna need in a second. Okay, with that in place, I can add this EVF or monitor mount from Small Rig that uses NATO rail to the top handle here. And actually what I'm gonna do is hang the monitor beneath this instead of putting it on top where you normally would because then you're just like craning your neck up and that's really gonna hurt after a while. All right, now I have the camera and monitor turned on and I'm gonna show you exactly where the monitor falls and it falls nice directly in front of my face so I can see exactly what I'm shooting and it's lined up nicely so I'm not looking too up or down and it's just right there directly in front of me. Now let's get the follow focus added to the front here and there are actually two 15 millimeter rod clamps here in the front so if you want to add full size 15 millimeter rods here you could and then you could mount your mat box to the end of it or add any other accessories that you need to but I'm actually just gonna go with one single four inch 15 millimeter rod adapter here. Okay, now we need to run power from the focus handle to the motor itself. So I'm just using this micro USB to micro USB cable. Now we're gonna add a matte box to the front of the lens here. And what I'm using is the Polar Pro Base Camp, which is my all time favorite matte box that I've ever used. Their filter system is incredible. What I have in here is a two to five variable ND filter and it has mist built right into it. So it helps kind of soften up my image a little bit and bloom the highlights. I, I love that. And like I said, it is variable ND so I can just spin the knob on the top here and it will darken. So I'm gonna clamp this to the front here and depending on the length of your lens, if it's really short, it might end up hitting up against this monitor. If it's a little bit longer, you're not gonna have any issues. All right, there we go. Now it's looking much more professional with the matte box on there, but there are still a few more things that we need to add. We still need to plug in power from the V-mount to the camera. So I just have a little D-tap cable with the Limo pin connection. So let's get that plugged in. And we still need to get the focus motor calibrated for this lens. So you could do that really quickly by holding down cal or calibrate on the back of the focus grip for a few seconds. All right, now it's begun the auto calibration. And honestly, this is just so nice because I can keep my hands firmly on the grips and still pull focus on the lens with just my pointer finger right here. So that means I can have a really nice steady stance and then I'm actually not doing a lot of work here with my arms to keep the rig up because the grips are positioned in a nice spot and the rig is much more balanced over the top of my shoulder. And now, of course, I gotta show you how this huge shoulder rig can mount on top of a tripod or a tripod head on a slider. And that is using this VCT14 receiver plates. And what I have mounted on the bottom of it is just a standard Manfrotto quick release plate. So let's go ahead and grab it. So here's my slider with a tripod head on top and I'm gonna put the VCT14 receiver plate right on top of this. All right, now that the arms are rotated up out of the way, we can easily get this clicked into place. There we go. It's on a tripod head, little slider, and so you can get right back to work doing your full camera movements without breaking down your shoulder rig at all. And then when you're ready to pull it off of the tripod or slider, you can of course pull on the quick release here and that will release it 
from the plates and then you can drop those arms back into place and start doing your shoulder rig moves again. All right, so you can see just how easy that is to take it on and off of a tripod or slider with that quick release plate because the mounts are on the far ends of the shoulder pad here and here is where it actually clicks into place and then it leaves a nice opening for your shoulder to rest it on. And yes, of course, there's so many other things I could add to this setup like a shotgun microphone, wireless lavaliers, a wireless transmitter, but for the sake of this video, I don't feel the need to add them. All right, guys, if you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe right now because I have a ton more videos coming out in shooting, editing, lighting, gear reviews, everything like that, and you don't wanna miss them. All right, I'll see you in the next video.